the Giants offense. We get questions about it all the time. And really, frankly, they've been a confusing bunch this year because when you look at some of the numbers, like simply runs per game, they're up there towards the top. But yet I'm getting a lot of questions about the struggling offense. So we're going to break that down and, and get to so many other mailbag questions next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And coming up on today's show, another edition of the Mailbag. So again, thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions. Uh, lots of good ones. We did one yesterday. I'm actually also going to re-answer a question I kind of realized I messed up yesterday. So anyway, let's just jump right in uh, with these questions about the offense. This is actually where I left off yesterday and I didn't have enough time to elaborate. So the question is from Michael, who says, do we think if the Giants continue to struggle offensively, Farhan will have the same approach this offseason? Obviously, Aaron Judge is the golden ticket, but this year he banked on the same group of overperformers from last year to have career years again. And David says, how can we or how can the Giants improve the struggling offense? And so the quick answer I gave yesterday was that it's like, okay, the struggling offense. You realize that they're fifth in Major League Baseball in runs per game at 4.9. The only teams ahead of them right now are the Dodgers, Mets, Yankees, and Phillies, and the Phillies are at 4.91. So it's a it's essentially you're tied with the Phillies, and the Dodgers, Mets, and Yankees have the three best records in baseball. At least they did entering yesterday. I haven't looked again this morning, but they're up there. And the Phillies' offense, I mean, you look at Bryce Harper and – all the other guys, Castellanos and Schwarber and Real Muto and uh, Hoskins, they should be scoring a lot of runs. And so the Giants kind of under the radar, they're actually run scoring has not really been their problem. And I also just want to push back against the idea that Giants president of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi, like was banking on the same group of overperformers from last year to have career years again. That's really not how I see it. And I gave the example yesterday about Mike Yastrzemski. He did not have an overperforming career year at all. He was worse than expected in 2021, and he's been their best player in 2022. Tommy Lastella wasn't very good and was injured a lot. Evan Longoria missed half of the season. So it wasn't all rainbows and sunshine for the Giants. Chris Bryant wasn't very good after being acquired. He was more mediocre than than very good and and they obviously didn't bring him back but I don't I really don't see it as they just kind of bought into a bunch of over performers Crawford he had a career year and Belt was fantastic but he was also great in 2020 so I don't know and I think that generally speaking they've been fine but it is interesting because I agree with you at times the Giants offense has been sluggish and the ultimate question here is do we think that if they continue to struggle offensively. I just, I do not call this struggling offensively. I think if they were much tighter defensively and the run prevention was there and they had some much better record, I don't think anybody would really be talking about this or asking these types of questions. If you really dig into the numbers and look no further than runs, right? That's the ultimate. If you're scoring runs, you're scoring runs. And it's been a little bit inconsistent, but... Ultimately, the numbers are there. So we're going to talk about some of the numbers. But just to answer your question, do we think that he'll have the same approach this offseason? I mean, until proven otherwise, I, I'm, it's hard for me to say that they're going to have a totally different approach. I do think that it, it is always worth repeating that they made a serious run at Bryce Harper. Yes, it is serious to offer a guy 12 years, $310 million dollars which they did. That is not some kind of false run at a guy. He ended up getting 13 years, 
330. So they were like right there with Harper. And Alex Pavlovich says, like, basically he, he knows for a fact that they made a legitimate run at Trevor Story. And so I think that they're always going to continue to be in on these guys. And Judge is like having a ridiculous type of season. He may win the MVP award. There's a question, you know, he's going to be kind of old for a guy reaching free agency. He's not 26 like Harper was when he hit free agency. I think he's going to be 31 or 32 at the end of the year. I'd have to recheck. So I wouldn't bank on them like signing these really talented players who are already kind of at a point where you would expect moving forward, they're going to start to decline kind of in the short term. Once that deal even starts, they're already hitting decline years. I think if they're going to break the bank and really go after someone, it would be someone like Harper, who was 26 at the time. And those guys don't come around very often. But they've made moves to make their team better. And so they've got a lot of guys. And we're going to get to a question about guys who are impending free agents and what do they do and who's coming back. They, they, they'll have to, like, Belt is going to be a free agent again. Longoria is going to be a free agent again. And, and many other guys. So... I would imagine, generally speaking, they like to mix and match. They like to platoon, but you know they wouldn't pr- platoon a guy like Bryce Harper if they got him, and they're going to continue to be in those markets, and I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they get a guy like that. But let's just get back to what's going on this year. The Giants as a whole have a 106 weighted runs created plus, all-encompassing offensive metric, 100 is league average. This was like at 112 at the beginning of the homestand or so. And so they didn't do well offensively. So that's where these questions are coming from, was a a struggling homestand for some of it. At other times, they they looked good. But overall, they didn't do great offensively on the homestand. So that's fine. That's 11th in baseball. It's, It's not great. It's not terrible. But it is better than average. But what's terrible is the defense. If we look at Fangraph's defensive runs above average metric, which I think uses... Now, outs above average as part of its equation. It's also weighting the different off- or defensive positions. So if you have a really good shortstop, that's more valuable than a really good first baseman because shortstop is more critical of a defensive position. And so it's uh, factoring that in. And for the Giants, negative 29.3 runs above average is second worst in Major League Baseball. 29 runs worse than average on defense. So if you could just have an average defense, you're, you would have allowed 30 fewer runs, basically, is what that means. And obviously, you know, that's not necessarily a precise number, but it's a problem. And so we're going to get to a question later today, like, what can they do about this? And for me, it's just it's not that the offense has not generally been the problem for the San Francisco Giants. And if they were if they had been consistently preventing more runs like that's it's not a run per game that we're talking about with just the defense but it's it's a it's more than a run than half a run per game below average defensively and so that's a big deal and if you could be above average and be you know plus 10 runs or so then that's a 40 run swing we're, we're we start to be in the neighborhood of actually talking about a whole run per game less if you can just play better defense on average so anyway, the question, how can they improve the struggling offense? I don't really think there's much that they need to do, but the trade deadline does come up. And eventually, I think that they'll be in play for some of these guys who are going to be out there. And maybe the the move to make is a move that is for a player who can help offensively. And maybe it's in a platoon or whatever, but also can be a good defender. And maybe you take away playing time from certain guys who are hurting you defensively. So that's that's probably the way I'm leaning right now. I think defense is the biggest thing that's gone on this year with that's gone wrong this year for the San Francisco Giants. So coming up next, I want to get to this question I got to yesterday and I didn't answer it properly about what Giants on the last year of their deal will be back next year. So we'll get to that in just a second. But first our next our next partner has a product that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted to see what all the hype was about. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 
high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of the things. And it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, and amazingly contains less than one gram of sugar. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. That's athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, as promised, we have more questions to get to, including me wanting to answer one that I didn't answer properly yesterday. But first, we have an important favor to ask of you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get started. It doesn't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thank you for your help. So yeah, the, the way I didn't answer this question yesterday was that I kind of only looked at guys who have options, like, like um, not options, club options. Like the Giants have a decision to make whether or not to bring them back. And they can bring them back if they simply say, yes, we want to pick up the option. But that's not what you were asking. So I, I think it's a, it's a good question. And so I'm going to get to the, the rest of it, which is the guys who are reaching free agency and who I think will be back among them. So there are a lot of guys. So we mentioned the cases of guys who have options. Carlos Rodon essentially has a player option. And then there are club options for Longoria and McGee. And I basically said, I think Rodon probably ends up rejecting that and hitting the open market. And I think Longoria, they end up not picking up the option and paying the buyout. McGee, I said it was a little closer. And if he keeps pitching well, like he has post IL, then they will pick it up. But if not, then they have the option to not pick it up. But besides that, like I said, Brandon Belt is entering the last year of his deal. You've also got Jock Peterson on this one-year deal. Matthew Boyd, who we haven't even seen yet, but he's reaching free agency at the end of the year. Wilmer Flores' deal is up after this year. And Jose Alvarez, Kurt Casale, and Dominic Leon. And then everybody who's arbitration eligible or pre-arbitration, the Giants have the choice there. But these other guys I just named are straight-up free agents. The Giants don't really have any say in that. So... Let's start with Belt, because he's the most important of those guys I just mentioned, I believe. So for Belt, it is significant that he just continues to be banged up. And for him this year, he's missed a lot of time with this knee issue. He's only played in 28 games. And if you look back to last year, he only played in 97 games. The narrative that he's like totally injury prone and never on the field is kind of false. He played... 51 games in the 60 game season the year before that 156 games he he was healthy all year long it looks like and a couple years before that only 104 and 112 but then before that 156 137 so he's actually been pretty durable but last year and this year that hasn't been the case but when he's been on the field since 2020 since this new regime kind of took over and the new hitting coaches and all that he's been one of the better offensive players in the game. Entering 2022, we could literally look at 2020 and 21 and say he's like top three in the game overall offensively when he's been on the field. And yes, it matters that he's not been on the field all the time, but still, like he's been a force offensively. And they don't necessarily have someone like in their system ready to like, like a first base prospect who's just like, destroying the upper minors and totally worthy of a shot and it would make sense to like 
give him that shot and let Brandon Belt go. So for me, I lean towards they're just going to continue to have interest in bringing back Brandon Belt. I think he likes it here. I believe he lives here year round. Could be wrong about that, but I, I do believe he has a house here at least, not just like renting. And he's just like a giant, kind of like Brandon Crawford. And maybe he's a midseason extension guy, except maybe not, given all the injuries. So so he's a guy, if he can be somewhat healthy and be somewhat, not just somewhat productive, but get back to being very productive, I do believe they're going to want to bring him back, and there's probably mutual interest there, as he's in the tail end of his career. He's not going to go out there and get a six-year deal from anybody. So if he can, if he wants to get a multi-year deal and have that security, and the Giants don't want to give it to him, and they want to go year to year, then that could be a situation in which he leaves. But you know, a a, a one-year deal with a club option for the second year, maybe with a significant buyout, so he gets something, even if they don't pick it up. I could definitely see that happening. For Jock Peterson, we did a whole segment on this at some point, talking about whether or not I thought he would be back. And I said Belt was the most significant, but it perhaps it's Jock Peterson, who, let's just point out, has had a very nice first few months in San Francisco. The dude has been one of the better offensive players in the game when he's been on the field. He's, he gets platooned, so he's not always out there. And I know some people have been asking me about them pulling him in the middle of the game, and I get it. It's a fair question, because later in the game, his spot comes up and you've taken him out, and there's a righty on the mound and you wish you could have him there. But they obviously know that that's what they're doing, and that's the decision they're making. And I actually think, you know, it didn't necessarily work out how they wanted it to the other day, but just a couple days prior, it absolutely worked out. So they're aggressive with the platooning and the pinch hitting even early in games if it's a significant moment. But anyway, 150 weighted runs created plus for Jock. That's a 269 average, 345 on base, 551 slugging. He's just been one of the better offensive players in baseball, frankly, and one of the better free agent pickups. If we're just looking at the performance in 2022, and he was a free agent in the offseason, he's been one of the better performers in baseball this year who was a free agent last year. And offense is down across the game. It's not just every player who's able to pick up and have a 150 weighted runs created plus. It's just not that easy to do. So the question is, will he be back? And I kind of, I think in, in the episode where I talked about this at length, ended up saying maybe, possibly yes, maybe 60-40 in favor of yes. But the more I've thought about this, the more I actually lean against it. And it has nothing to do with them not wanting to spend what it would take to bring him back. First of all, if you're just like a platoon guy who's kind of limited defensively and limited as a base runner, he's not going to be a guy who's going to go out there and cost over $100 million. It's not even going to be close to that for Jock Peterson. He may warrant a multi-year deal, but it's not going to be crazy expensive. But that being said, do I think the Giants want to splurge a little bit on a platoon player when they've been able to kind of unearth these guys like Yaz, who maybe is more than a platoon player, but Wade, Luis Gonzalez, guys who can hit right-handed pitching, be left-handed outfielders. They've kind of found these guys growing on trees pretty much. And the the reason I said no for Peterson possibly is because you've got uh, all of these guys are going to be out of options. Like Wade is already out of options. Luis Gonzalez next year will be out of options. And that's a, that is a significant piece of the puzzle. Because then you've got Gonzalez, you've got Wade, you've got Yastrzemski, and you've also got Steven Duggar, who's going to be out of options. So that's four left-handed outfielders who are all... I mean, Yastrzemski can be option, but he won't be because he's their best player right now. And then also there's an intriguing free agent market out there. So there are other outfielders out there, like Brandon Nimmo really strikes me as a possible extremely strong fit. He does everything they like and would be a better option than Jock Peterson, frankly. As much as I like Jock Peterson, I think Nimmo kind of fits what they do more. He would cost more, but I think that he's the type of guy they might go out there and sign, even if it's somewhat expensive. And then there's other big names like Aaron Judge that you might want to just at least put yourself in that conversation. 
I don't, they don't like to just like wait around and rely on a superstar picking them. So I, I would, it's more like, do we see other possible fits like Nimmo? And then also the fact that all those other outfielders are out of options that is going to, that makes me lean against Jock Peterson being back in 2023 and beyond. So coming up next, we're going to talk about the possibility of the Giants trading for a defense first player, or at least somebody who can help them defensively. What can they do about this terrible problem they've had on defense this year? But first, betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup. Hello, no more odds there. That series is over. Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors. My goodness. How inspiring is that team? And just unbelievable. Just I'm in awe of what they're able to do and specifically Curry. And hope you picked him, you know, at Bet Online to be the finals MVP and the Warriors. If you had picked them at the beginning of the year to win the title, I think you would have had some pretty you'd be pretty wealthy right about now because they were not favorites. But you can check out all this action all year long at Bet Online, including the NHL hockey finals, Stanley Cup finals, Major League Baseball, and of course all of the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, here we go. We're going to get to some more questions. I'll, I'll, I kind of want to speed through some of them, do some rapid fire. I think that that would be a little bit of fun. But the question comes from Cobert, who says, would the Giants ever trade for a defense first player at the deadline? Probably a minor trade and definitely not giving up much, but perhaps a move made with the postseason roster in mind in the same way teams want a speed pinch runner for the postseason. It's a possibility, and immediately I thought of the Yankees did something like that last year with Tim LoCastro going, he's like one of the fastest players in baseball, and they traded for him, and the Yankees were a team that had defensive problems. I thought it was a little bit, you know, it's like patchwork too much. You're just like, we're a bad defensive team. Let's just bring in a good defensive player, but that doesn't solve your team-wide issues, and also a roster spot is valuable. Last year, rosters were bigger right you had 28 all season long and this year you're at 26 so I'm not sure that they can afford not financially but as a roster spot I'm not sure they can afford to give one to a player who doesn't do anything but provide defensive value maybe you maybe a guy who has options and you can stash them in the minor leagues possibly but I think they already have guys there's probably guys I don't off the top of my head know who in like offensive excuse me who in the infield would be who would fit that mold. But I do know like Steven Duggar, just as an example, he's a defense first type of player. And if the offense, the outfield defense becomes just a glaring weakness, it's nice to have Steven Duggar in the fold. And maybe with a playoff roster, he does make it for defensive purposes. So he can be optioned. I know a lot of people, there's confusion about that. He actually has four option years for some reason. I don't even understand it myself. But he's getting close to being eligible to return, and I think that they'll option him. But he's it's nice to have something like that. He's speed and defense from Steven Duggar. So if it becomes a problem, we may see him. But I don't, I don't really see them trading for a guy who's just defense at the deadline. I think that they may ultimately end up targeting someone who's going to fit into their lineup and also just be a good defensive player. I think that they'll probably trend towards prioritizing that a little bit more given just how much of a problem it's been this year do just want to reiterate that it's a lot of the same players from last year and so it wasn't necessarily the most uh, likely outcome that they were going to be this bad and it's like we say that defense doesn't slump and it's just you you are who you are defensively but I don't buy that at all I think that you can absolutely go through funks defensively. And we've seen that from Crawford as an example. Like he was trending towards being worse defensively prior to 2021. And then he got really good again in 2021. And so it's kind of hard to explain in some ways. But just like you can have down years offensively, I don't see why you couldn't just kind of have a down year defensively. Part of it is just the type of ball that gets hit to you. 
Maybe you're just, you're focused on, you're like thinking about your swing when you're out there on the field and then a ball gets hit to you and you make a mistake and Crawford has not been the same offensive player. So maybe he's taken it out to the field a little bit. I'm not trying to accuse him of that, but it's something that does happen sometimes. So uh, I just don't think it's defense is as stable and predictable as we make it out to be just like hitting you can be good sometimes and struggle at other times I think we're just seeing a struggling defense but not necessarily players who we should have expected to struggle this much defensively next question I'm sorry I I somehow didn't copy your name so I just have the question itself I apologize for that but the question is can Giants can the Giants make a run for Jazz Chisholm if he's available, does it make sense? Okay, I've received this question multiple times, so I've chosen to address it. Uh, the The thing is that apparently there's been some drama with Jazz Chisholm and the Marlins, and they held a team meeting and kind of called him out for something or other. Uh, it, the whole thing was weird to me. But if the Marlins decide to trade him, they're insane, is kind of my answer here. Of co- He would make perfect sense for the Giants he's like the perfect player for the San Francisco Giants but there's just no way that they're trading him they would be so dumb to be like yeah we just don't we don't like something about his attitude or work ethic or whatever it was I'd have to reread I'd glance through the article and I was just confused mostly like he's been a monster and he's like breaking out and he's so athletic he's got crazy power He would make so much sense for the Giants, but there's just no way he's available. And if he was available, it would cost an arm and a leg in prospect capital to get him. And it just doesn't make sense. I don't see why the Marlins would do this this early in his career when he's got all this club control remaining. If anything, he's a guy they should be like signing to an extension, not trading him. But historically, the Marlins have kind of done this where they've had good players and they've traded them away. But, But usually it's when they're closer to free agency and he's so far away. It just doesn't make any sense at all to me. So anyway, next question comes from Bay Area Fan 34 who says, should we be concerned about Tyler Rogers, even though the advanced numbers are still solid? And then TylerNuss.eth says, why do they keep rolling with Tyler Rogers? So this is just another example where I like to say, are we really reading into 29 innings in one season as opposed to looking at the whole picture of his career? And What's more relevant, 29 innings right now or 156 innings of his entire career? Yes, you want to look at the most recent numbers and weight them probably a little bit more heavily. So maybe look at the career numbers and then tilt it a little bit more towards what he's done recently. But 100% without a doubt, I am. I think they should still be rolling with Tyler Rogers. I mean, he has one of the best ground ball rates in the game. The average launch angle against him is negative, so teams just don't hit the ball in the air. They don't hit barrels against him, which is that damaging type of in-the-air contact. It doesn't mean like on the sweet spot. It means a barrel is like a hard-hit ball in the air, basically. And his career rate of balls in play that are barrels against him is 1.4%, which is just ridiculously minuscule. And he hasn't allowed a home run all year. He's only allowed seven home runs in 156 innings in his major league career. Career ground ball rate is 58%, and this year it's 56%. So I'm not worried about him. He has not been good, and there's been a lot of BABIP, you know, balls in play that are falling for hits. And I know we say that that's just what he does, but actually his career average on balls in play against him is a very normal 299. This year it's at 340. And his left on base percentage, as we always say on the show, everybody usually ends up around 72%. And this year for Rodgers, he's only stranding 61% of his base runners. And you might say, well, he's just not good enough to strand his base runners. Well, guess what his career left on base percentage is? 72.9%. So the career average on balls in play is normal. The career left on base percentage is normal this year they're not normal they're worse than normal but it's a small sample 29 innings is a very small sample for a starting pitcher it's just a handful of starts and we saw like Carlos Rodon right he went through a five start stretch or so where he was pretty bad but on the whole he's been good this season because small samples aren't necessarily indicative of a player's skill 
So for Rodgers, the ERA is 522, but the career ERA 3.06. And the peripherals are more down there. So yeah, I'm not that worried about him. He's been a little bit off with his command, kind of falling behind guys uncharacteristically. So if he can just kind of find a release point and get some more normal, you know, convert these batted balls into outs at a little bit more of a normal rate, which I think we'll see more of, even though he does allow a lot of weak contact. Overall in his career, it's worked. And I think that if we just give him enough time, it's going to continue to work. So that's that's my answer there. That is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen today. The first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. Search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders, the Odyssey experts, and the draft experts of Locked on NBA Big Board. The five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. Please smash that thumbs up button, that five-star button. Really appreciate it if you feel so inclined. So thank you in advance, and thank you to everyone who's done so already. Can't wait to be with you again on Monday. Have a great weekend, Giants versus Pirates. Uh, We'll see you on Monday. Stay locked on Giants.